Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to have you here as we are. We're starting a brand new book of the Bible today. I know we're, we're cruising through these uh, these minor prophets, spending a couple days uh, here and there, kind of getting the overall theme, uh, a little bit of the structure, the, the main message of them. And today we're in the book of Amos. So just a little background information here on Amos is what we're going to kind of lay the foundation for today. And in order to do that, we're just going to read the first couple of verses here. It says this in Amos chapter 1, verse 1. It says, This message was given to Amos, a shepherd from the town of Tekoa in Judah. He received this message in visions two years before the earthquake, when Uzziah was king of Judah, and Jeroboam II, the son of Joash, was king of Israel. Now, not every uh, book in the Bible, every uh, book of prophecy, either major prophet or minor prophet, is identified this specifically when it was written. Uh, who it was written by, and, and all those details. Um, usually we have to feel from the context. As we're reading through a prophetic book, uh, these are, and once again, when we say prophetic, doesn't mean necessarily telling the future, but giving warnings, giving instruction, speaking to people on God's behalf. Uh, the audience that it's attended to, the events that it's talking about, you can tell from the context really where it's placed. This one just straight out tells us. This was during the reign of, of uh, when... Uh, Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam uh, was king of Israel. So this puts it in a different, distinct place in history. And, and that's what's important to remember here. As we're reading through scripture, there is a timeline that's taking place here. <clears throat> we read through 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. This, these are the historical books. They, they give us the history from uh, the time of, of Saul, King David, all the way through to that captivity, to their return. So a big portion of history. All these prophetic books fit into those time frames. Uh, they're what God is speaking into the historical account. Um, as these kings are making decisions, they're choosing to follow God and not follow God, God sings his messengers along the way. So Amos is one of those messengers. Uh, he isn't a priest. He isn't part of the religious elite. He's a shepherd. So he's he's doing his his own thing. He's living his life. Um, being a shepherd, and God calls him out of that to give a message. We don't know how many messages he gives, uh, but this one specific message, the book of Amos, is kind of written all in one account. So it's not a compilation of a bunch of things that he said, because this pointed to this specific time in history. It says that it was given two years before the great earthquake uh, that, that took place. Now, we don't have a, a, a historical record of this earthquake. didn't make it down in any of the historical records that survived. <clears throat> But we can be assured that there is a uh, earthquakes that take place in this region, and within you know short periods of time after that, they would have known exactly this time uh, that Amos was referring to. Let's talk a little bit about some of his contemporaries. So there wasn't just one prophet speaking during this time. There, there's some overlap. There's some different people that God is speaking through. So some of Amos's contemporaries, specifically in the area of Israel, remember it's the divided kingdom, ten tribes to the north, Israel. Uh, two tribes to the south, Judah. So his contemporaries up to the north in the area of Israel are Hosea, Jonah, and Micah. Uh, so the one we probably know the most of is Jonah. Uh, Jonah is the one that, that God sends to the actually to prophesy to the Assyrians. This is the major threat during this time. The Assyrian Empire is growing, is expanding. It is a threat to Israel. They've been having influence there for quite a while. They've been paying tribute so that they won't take them over, but they're they're just right on the edge, right ready to take over. And some of the messages here in the book of Amos is a warning to the people that if they don't turn back to God, that the Syrians are going to be able to come in and take them over. So the Assyrian Empire is, is the great empire of the time. They're the ones with the most power. They're more powerful than the Egyptians at this time. They've kind of eclipsed them in great power and wealth. But there are a few... Uh, uh, dynasties on the rise. The Greek empire is starting to grow and expand. Um, it, this is the, the eighth century that we're talking about here. So the first Olympiad is recorded. It's taking period during this period of time. They're the first Olympic games. Um, the birth of Rome takes place. So the, the Roman empire in its very infancy from just one little city uh, is started during this eighth century. So this is an important time of history. There are all these other things happening in the world around, and we're going to see their stories intersect with the biblical account later on. Uh, but this is all the things that are happening, and it's just important to know. And when we read about the Bible, this isn't a fairy tale. This wasn't in some faraway land, far 
long, long ago in a land far, far away. No, this was in a specific place at a specific time. There are other things happening in the lands around it, and we, we know what's happening. We have the archaeological evidence. We have the historical evidence. <clears throat> we have outside sources that are confirming that these things are, are taking place. So here we have Amos prophesying to uh, Israel, to Judah, during this time, primarily to Israel, uh, but it's attached during this time in history when Uzziah is the king of Judah and Jeroboam, or yeah, Uzziah was the king of Judah and Jeroboam is the king of Israel. And things are relatively good. It's a time of, of relative peace as he's uh, sharing this. But this is the warning he gives. This is what he saw and heard. The Lord's voice will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. Lush past, the lush pastures of the shepherds will dry up. The grass on Mount Carmel will wither and die. So it's a warning. It's a word of warning. This isn't a, uh, a letter of encouragement. This isn't a letter of, hey, keep doing the right thing. It's, hey, you guys, things seem peaceful right now. Things seem like they're going well, but don't let that fool you. Your hearts are in the wrong spot and God's judgment is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. So that's kind of the, the, the foundation here for Amos. That's kind of where we're going with this. This is where it's at in history. This is what's happening in the world around him. And we're going to be diving into this over the next few days here uh, through the account of Amos. Let's go ahead and pause it there right now. Uh, let's get ready for the day. It is a Thursday, which means it's Thankful Thursday. It is an opportunity here in our, our prayer campaign. We're about halfway through it. We're, we're taking this through the end of the year. We've been picking a topic each and every day to pray for. It's been great just to be able to, to focus on that, to come around this as a church family. And today is all about thanking God for the blessings in our lives. So let's take some time to do that this morning as we start our day, and more importantly, to continue to do it throughout our day. Let's pray. God, we come to you just full of thanks this morning. Maybe that's not how the way that we woke up. Woke up. Maybe that's not what we felt like when we first opened our eyes. But God, we're turning the corner right now. We're choosing to focus on the many blessings you've given us in our lives. The time to be together. The, the fact that we woke up. God, as we look towards the rest of our day, things that we have planned, uh, things that, that we know will just come up, God, we, we are grateful that you have given us the, the energy, that you've given us your Holy Spirit to walk through each and every event. God, we thank you for the many little blessings in life and that we have all that we need. That, God, when we think about those who are without, God, we are so far from, from that. God, help us to be content, which means not settling, but truly grateful and thankful for every little thing that you've given us. God, we thank you for our friendships, and our relationships. God, we thank you for our church family. We thank you, God, for what you're doing uh, in and through our, our church families. We get to celebrate some, some baptisms in, in Goodyear this weekend, God, as we get to celebrate baptisms across all of our campuses uh, in Goodyear and Buckeye in November, God. We, we thank you for the life change that is taking place, for the people making decisions to follow you. God, we thank you for the, the blessings and finances, God, the, the way that people have stepped up and uh, offered their, their resources and put them in your hands as, as a personal act of worship, as a personal step of faith. God, we, we thank you for the tides that are changing in that area. We give you all the honor and glory here today. I pray that you would work in and through us. God, that we would be able to see the, the moments of thanksgiving throughout the day because you are good. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I'm looking forward to this weekend when we talk about thanksgiving, thanking God for different things. Uh, we've got a worship night for, for Palm Valley Church coming up this Sunday night, 7 o'clock p.m., and it's going to be out at our Buckeye campus. For many of you guys who have been praying for a permanent location in the at, for our Buckeye campus, man, make it out there for the worship night. Kind of see what you're praying for. Put your put your feet on the ground of, of the uh, the campus that you're praying for. That God would do something miraculous and come together and worship, celebrate what God is doing. Looking forward to doing that on Sunday night at seven o'clock p.m. But I'm going to see you several more times before then because 24 hours from now, we're going to be right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys. Have a great, great rest of the day.